Hello, this is a Papa Pump installation video guide, the pump that will last for over 100 years. It has been installed at Longfield Orchard, County Kilkenny in Ireland. Now as you will see from the video, the orchard is situated on a valley floor and has little or no fall. This is a major installation problem for the pump requires a 2 meter water drop to build enough pressure to allow the pump to work correctly. The first thing we needed to do here was to take the ground and water levels. If you are planning on fitting a Papa pump yourself, a laser level will be required. You can hire one, or you can buy one, or as in our case, you can simply borrow one. But you will need one. Once we had chosen our pump location, we needed to take the water levels and project them onto markers at key points. We have placed them at the stream crossing and here at our chosen pump station site. The pumping station is our centre point. This is where we need to achieve the 2 meter water drop and from here we need to find a lower point from where the exhaust water can be released back into the stream. Unfortunately, that re-entry point happens to be 250 meters downriver. It is said many times that preparation for any project is vital for its success and this project is no different. Here you can see the hedge being trimmed back to make ready for where the supply head and the supply pipe is to be placed. Incidentally, the supply head, that is, the point where we take the water from the stream, had to be 450 metres upstream for to achieve the 2 metre water height required. It is also advisable to work with the laser level when excavating your pipe trenches to keep close check on your levels, especially on your wastewater outlet to make sure the wastewater is not impeded and can cleanly get away. Because we had spent so much time planning our pipe route, we now knew exactly where to excavate for the collecting tank and the pump chamber. For these two structures, we needed to shutter off an area for reinforced concrete pads. If you are intending to install a pump yourself, please take note that the overflow for the supply tank and water pump chamber exhaust pipe must be installed at this stage before any concrete is poured. Remember, if you make a mistake at this crucial point, then tears will surely follow. When the pads had dried and had set for a week, we placed the first concrete ring over the desired position and used waterproof mortar to seal around the bottom. This we done for both the pump chamber and the collecting tank. While the first stages of our tank and chamber were in place and drying, we moved on and excavated further upstream to where the trench met with the existing stream or river. In this section, we had to allow the supply pipe to cross beneath an existing river bed. Here we see the river supply source and a concrete mini dam or supply head, which is secured deeply into the river bed. The supply pipe is secured into concrete and has a shut off sluice fitted. From this point, we laid six inch plastic storm pipes down along the river bed for 10 meters to where the supply trench and the river meet. We use a 6 inch to 4 inch reducer and continue the further 440 meters underground to the pumping station using a standard and cheaper 4 inch ducting pipe. In hindsight, the stronger sewage pipe would have been a better choice as the cheaper pipes had eventually to be replaced by them. Time to fit the 2 inch galvanized steel pipe. Here we use a 2 inch core bit to drill for the Papa pump supply pipe, one in the pump chamber and one in the supply tank. The steel pipe was then inserted through both of these holes, leaving 8 inches protruding into each tank at either side as we had measured and allowed for. Once propped and secure, we use waterproof mortar to seal the pipes into the chamber and paying extra attention to the supply tank to eliminate any water loss. We then used a 4 inch core bit to drill out the other side of the supply tank and fitted the 4 inch supply pipe. This proved to be a more accurate fit and the pipe had just to be tapped and wedged into place which made it easier to seal. A polyurethane based sealer was more than adequate. We also fitted the second ring of the supply tank and sealed it. After a few days everything had dried and cured. We fitted the filter that came supplied by Papa Pump onto the galvanized pipe within the supply tank. We then fitted the 2 inch ball valve also supplied by Papa Pump onto the opposite side of the pipe in the pump chamber. We then opened the sluice gate at the delivery head upstream and allowed the water to flow down through the pipe work, up through the supply tank and through the overflow pipe and back into the river. Taking on board the advice given by Papa Pumps, 
we now flush several gallons of water from the supply tank through into the pump chamber and away out the water exhaust making sure all debris was gone. We now fitted the pump, plumbed it into our existing delivery pipe, opened the ball valve and the pump immediately started to pulse and work. We checked to see if we had a supply of water up the 50 foot to our storage tank. We did. We measured the amount, approximately 1 litre per minute. 1,440 litres per day. Success! We have achieved the height and volume of water that the PAPA pump stated it would. Without using fossil fuel of any kind, just water power alone. Remember this advice. If you fit this pump to the standards that water power technologies give, these are the people who have designed and built this pump many years ago. It will last for over 100 years. That's four generations. Not many other pump manufacturers can claim this, if any. My name is Lance O'Brien and thank you for watching this video. I hope it may be of help to you in some way in the future.